file servers, how to set them up. Who knows how to do all that? I do, and guess what? Come hang out with me now, and you're gonna know how to do it also. Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, coming at you with another fun and exciting episode in our ongoing conversation about how do I do that stuff in Windows Server. Remember, you can always check us out on our YouTube channel and subscribe to see this and all the other episodes as we continue those conversations. And if you need more in-depth training, a little bit more detail around how we do these things, well, you go right over to the source. Check us out over at IT Pro TV, where myself and all the other entertainers that I spend time with really are on point, creating content for you nonstop, figuring out how to tell you how to do all those interesting, exciting, and really important things you need to know how to do to run your businesses every day, whether it's Microsoft, Cisco, VMware, you name it, we cover it. All you got to do is subscribe and check us out. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to set up a file server using the file services in Windows Server 2022. You know, I get asked about how to do this a lot from customers when I'm in the field working with them, from students when I'm teaching. Hey, we've heard about this concept. We know that there's a centralized solution that allows us to share resources and manage access to them. We know it's buried somewhere inside those roles and services Microsoft provides, but we're not quite sure how to set it up. We've heard it's complicated, and we know there's all these other things, server pools, storage pools, volumes, disks, the list goes on, and we're just not sure we can do it. Well, let me tell you, there's nothing you can't do if you just take the time to figure it out. And when it comes to setting up file services, it really couldn't be easier. Let me show you what I mean. Join me here if you will. We're in our Server 2022 virtual machine. Running Server 22 as a v Server 2022 as a VM is just giving me the opportunity to be able to create these conversations and have them with you without having to worry about having all of this physical infrastructure sitting in our data centers dedicated to doing this nonstop. I can just run this thing right off my Windows 11 laptop, which is what I do when I create these episodes and we have these conversations, but I can do it from anywhere. And believe it or not, I'm sitting in a beach in Bali right now, even though that looks like our data center. All right, so back to where we are. We're going to go ahead and talk about file services. Now, I'm using and I'm in the server manager in Windows Server 2022. We always begin our conversations here. And I always show you how to open up the server manager if you're not aware of where it is and how you can find it. We go down to the start menu. And in case the server manager has not already started up for you, it's going to be there on the right in the navigation area. It's one of those tiles that is pinned. It's always in the upper left-hand corner. Click that, you'll be able to launch the server manager. It's gonna look just like this. Now, in many servers that are configured up out of the box, so to speak, standard default installation, we're gonna see there is an element of file and storage services already configured, and it's gonna be sitting there waiting for you. It may not necessarily be there in your server. It really just depends on your environment. But let's assume for a minute on that left navigation bar right there that you see file and storage services, like I'm highlighting in blue. What that indicates to you is that some element of the file and storage services are configured, but it may or may not be the file server that you're interested in. And we have to go under the hood, so to speak, and take a look. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to click on that, and we're going to see, sure enough, that there are some file and storage services that are currently exposed and available. We see if we go in for a closer look, we can see the server locally and how it is managed. And underneath we can see volumes, disks, and potentially storage pools if they are configured and available. Right now I don't have any storage pools in the system, but I could set them up. I don't have anything other than just one simple disk that I'm working with, but you can see that right there. And I currently have a couple of different volumes and I could see them displayed and see the storage status and consumption on them. So I've got basic storage system management capabilities and visibilities, but I don't see anything about a file server. So in order to configure that, we're gonna have to go and install that as either a role or a feature. And so we're gonna go up and we're gonna go to manage right up here at the upper right hand corner. And we're gonna click there and we're gonna use our add roles and features option. And we're gonna go ahead and begin that process. We're gonna click, and let me just bring this over here and kind of plant it right in the middle of the screen so you could see it. We're gonna be on our before you begin screen. Not a lot we gotta worry about here, so we just overview material Microsoft provides. We can just qu quickly and simply click through this. We can even skip this in future iterations if we choose to, getting rid of it so we don't have to look at it again if we don't want to. 
We're then gonna be on our installation type screen. Are we doing our standard default install, which is role or feature based, which is what we're here to do? Or do we wanna configure remote desktop services? If we choose to do that, we would make another selection. Remote desktop services allow us to provide services remotely from this machine and make them available to other people so they can connect. It's up to us to decide, but we wanna configure the file service, so we're gonna stay with our default choice. We're then gonna be asked to provide a focus on through server selection, which server, which machine, which endpoint we wanna configure. We always see the local machine there by default and the select a server from the server pool box. But if there are multiple servers we're managing, perhaps some of them are remote, We'll see multiple servers listed here. We have to be aware of the naming convention of the servers and choose the one that we want to configure. In this case, I'll go with the default, the local one. I have an option to select a virtual hard disk there and to configure that virtual hard disk, pre-configuring it means it will have this capability, this service, this feature, this role installed. And then when I bring it up and use it to spawn one or more virtual machines, they'll already be configured this way. So I can do that if I choose to, if I want to, there are additional steps, and I will have to provide a path to where that virtual hard disk file will be found, the .vhdx file. We're not gonna do that in this discussion, but at least you know that it is available. We're gonna stick with our server, selected. We're gonna click Next. We then are gonna be presented with our first of two screens that will be of interest to us, our roles. Now, in order to install the file server, we have to know that it is actually gonna be part of a role that is available to us. So we need to know what screen to look on. And that role that we are gonna look for is called the file and storage services. We were just taking a look at that on the dashboard before we got started. And we can see it's selected there, or at least I'm pointing to it right there, about halfway down the screen. It says file and storage services. It says one of 12 installed, and there's a black mark in the square, indicating that some configuration has taken place as we suggested, but we're not fully configured yet. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click the arrow to open this up. We will see that the file and iSCSI services area is not selected, it is white, there is no check next to it, unlike the storage services which are installed and configured as you can see by default as I suggested. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open up file and iSCSI services, exposing the additional options that we have. And sure enough, at the top of that list, I'm highlighting it, kind of hovering over it right there. It says file server. And I can select that box. And when I do that, I put a check in the box above, put a check in the file server box. And if all I want to do is set up the file server and have that up and running, I'm good. I don't need to make any other choices. If there's some other services, other roles, other capabilities I may want to install as part of this, I can bring those in here as well. For instance, if we look a little bit further down on this list, I see the file server resource manager that will give me a graphical interface to manage aspects of the file server uh, and apply configurations and manage various settings. So I may want to install that. And I have the file server VSS agent service. That's going to allow me be able to go and do backups on this particular system using the volume shadow copy service to be able to back up our content, all the data that is stored on the file server using either Microsoft backup, the Windows backup product, or perhaps a third party solution, Veeam or whatever it may be. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna select the file server resource manager. And the reason I'm gonna do that is we then see that there are some dependencies, some additional features capabilities that we're selecting require other tools in order to operate, in other words. And Microsoft's smart enough to realize, hey, you know what? We should just select those for you, tell you what they are so you know we're installing them, and then simply allow you to see that and recommend that you click to add the features. And it's not a recommendation, because if you don't, we're not gonna be able to go through the installation. It's pretty much required. But the reality is, this gives us all of the support we need, the remote server administrative tools, the role uh, capabilities associated with administration for the file services tools, specifically the file server resource manager tool set that we're asking to have installed. Great, we're gonna add those in as well. We're all good there. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click next. When we've done that, we have no additional selections here because they've already been made for us. Microsoft went ahead and selected them, if you remember, and the remote server administration tools right here have been pre-configured under the role administration tools. And if we go down, we will see the file services tools. 
and the file server resource manager tools, which we've asked to install to support the resource manager, are already selected based on the screen we just saw in the pop-up dialog box we clicked and selected to add those features from. In other words, I don't have to know how to go three or four layers deep and find this specific set of tools and settings. Microsoft does it for me. Two thumbs up, we like that a lot. Very convenient and very helpful. We're gonna accept that, click next. We've got our summary of the activities that are about to happen. I can restart the machine automatically if necessary by checking that box off. We get our prompt saying, hey, if you restart, people are gonna get cut off. Be aware of that, we're not gonna warn you. Okay, I'm aware, no problem. The only one working on the server, no big deal. We're gonna click yes, we're gonna click install. I'm gonna let this do its thing. Now installs can take anywhere from maybe 30 seconds to a minute to several minutes, depending on the number of features you've selected, number of tools that have to be installed, services configured, all that kind of stuff. Our blue progress bar up there tells us how far we have come and how far we have left to go. It usually jumps to roughly around half to maybe three quarters, almost immediately as you saw it do. And then it hangs there for a little bit. So just be patient with it. Don't worry about it. Things are happening. As a matter of fact, you can even close this window and the install will finish and tell us when it's done. It is now done, but it will tell us it's done. We don't even need to stay in the box if we don't want to. We could simply look right up here and be able to get a status update and it will tell us that we're done. So we're gonna go ahead and click close. That's been configured. We now are gonna be able to tell that our file server is installed. So let's go take a look at that. We're gonna go up to our tools menu right over here. And actually we can first look up here to see that our feature install was indeed complete. That's just a visual representation of that, but we're good with that. We know that that has happened. Let's just get rid of those indicators. We'll go to tools and now, Remember we installed the file server resource manager. We can see that that is in our tool set. We're gonna open that up and just let that come up. We'll give that just a second. I'm gonna minimize it. We'll come right back to it. We can go back to our file and storage services area in our navigation bar as well. And when we do that, we're gonna see another indicator of the fact that our file server is now up and running. Remember we saw servers, we saw volumes, disk storage pools prior to doing the configuration. Now we see some additional stuff, shares, iSCSI, and work folders. And these three new elements are directly related to the file server and the services that it supports that we have installed. And so when we go to shares here, we can then go in and begin to think about creating shares to serve up and share whatever data may be on this file server that we felt needed a file server to manage it. We can then work with iSCSI services and virtual disks can be created and provided and provisioned. We have that capability as well. And we have what are known as work folders where we can go ahead and we can configure the work folder service and then provide those folders similar to shares, but a little bit different. And we're able to manage those as well. All three of those capabilities, all three of those services, all three of those options now become available to us as we've installed and configured the file server. We're gonna minimize our server manager. We're gonna go back to that file server resource manager. Remember, this is optional. We don't need to install this. It's just a follow-on. Gives us extended, additional, broader capabilities to manage and work with the file server once we configure it. And we could always install it after the fact, by the way. It doesn't have to be installed at the same time. So we could always come back and do this later. But it's nice just to quickly note what's in here. If you're interested in being able to manage the file server a little more deeply, not just providing shares, but then actually creating quotas associated with those shares and managing them, being able to see and understand how file screening is done, to understand what kind of files we will and will not allow access to, how to report on capabilities around storage and storage usage, as well as doing classification and classification management and associated tasks with file management that are set up to run and monitoring those. Well, any and all those things are available here through the resource manager, and we now have options. And options, as you know, are a good thing. So you've seen how to install and stand up the file server. You've seen how to install the associated management capabilities through the file server resource manager separately. And you've seen how to manage the basic elements of the file server through the server manager. So we've made hopefully some really good progress for you. It can be complicated, but remember, it's only complicated until you start. Once you get going, you tend to find out it's really not all that difficult. For this and all other really cool conversations around how do I do that in Windows, 
keep coming back. Remember, subscribe to that YouTube channel. Check us out over at IT Pro TV. I'll be going to get ready for new and exciting episodes with more cool stuff we want to show you how to do. I'm going to wish you happy servering until I come back and do that, and I'll see you soon.